Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. One week ago, I made a very nice hike with the Erasmus Mundus Flood Risk Management students in Saxonian, Switzerland. During the hike, we have mapped our locations and added pictures in a field form using Mergin Maps, which is a great tool for field data collection. In other videos on my YouTube channel, I cover how to create um, field forms and how to use the app in the field. In this video, I'll cover how to create wedge buffers that show the direction of the pictures. In the last video, I've demonstrated how to create this outdoor map using the MapTiler plugin. And we have exported the GPX file from Strava to show the route on the map. Now we're going to add the locations of the pictures together with their rotations. The procedure is based on a very nice tutorial made by Kurt Menke for the community health maps. I'll provide a link in the description of this video. First, we need to import the pictures using the Mergent plugin, which connects to the cloud service where our mapping project from the field has been stored. After installing Mergent, you can find Mergent in the browser panel. But first, you need to give your credentials to connect to the cloud service and find your projects. You can save your credentials and test the connection. If the connection is OK, click OK. Now it will update your folders on Mergin Maps, and there you can find your mapping project. Here we will use the Schmilka project. Click right and choose download. It will ask a folder for where to download these uh, files from the project. It will create a subfolder with the name Schmilka. You can also open the project immediately. Here you see the project from Mergin Maps in QGIS. Now let's explore the collected data. I open the attribute table, and if I switch it to the form view, then I can see the pictures in the attribute table because they are linked and the widget makes sure that we can see the pictures here. Now let's see where the pictures are stored. You can uh, see it here in the browser panel under your merging project. But if you click right on your project, you can also choose open directory and it shows the folder with the pictures. So let's open our most recent project and see how we can add those pictures to it. In the processing toolbox you can find a useful tool to extract the metadata from the pictures. It's called import geotagged photos. There you can provide the input folder where you have your pictures stored. In our case that's in the Schmilka folder. If you have subfolders, you can check the box scan recursively. And we save the layer to a shapefile. We call photo locations. Then I run it and it gives uh, one error for one picture that it cannot find the metadata that can happen. And it will simply be skipped. So let's uh, Add a little marker there so we see where our pictures have been taken. So I'm using an SVG marker from the symbols. I choose a red marker. Make it a little larger. So there's where our pictures have been taken. And when I open the attribute table of this layer, I can see uh, the picture because there's the link to the picture. But I also see this uh, metadata that comes from the uh, EXIF file. And uh, that's very useful for the next step where we're going to uh, create wedge buffers and rotate also the pictures with uh, the direction that you can see here. This layer is in a geographic coordinate system, so I'm going to reproject it before we continue to avoid that we get all kinds of uh, errors. I'll call it photo locations UTM. Change the CRS to UTM and click OK. Now we're using another tool to create the wedge buffers. It's called create wedge buffers and we use as an input layer the UTM photo locations. And you're going to change the um, Azimut using a data defined override and we choose direction. We can give a wedge width in degrees and uh, I'll keep it as default and an outer radius which will be the size of the polygon with the outer radius. I think in uh, map units this will create polygons um, 
So I'll just put it at 100 and you can trial and error what works best for the skill uh, at which you want to use these wedge buffers. So it's also good to create a temporary file and see the result. For this demo, I'll just go with this. If you want to have it more uh, detailed and zoomed in, then you create smaller wedge buffers. Now let's uh, style the wedge buffers. I'm going to use a shape burst fill. And I'm going to change the first color. Also make it orange. It, uh, it's linked to that root. You can also make it contrasting with the root. And the second color I'll change to uh, transparent using the opacity slider. And I'm going to adjust the uh, distance. So this looks uh, quite nice for the different directions that the pictures are taken. But now it would be also nice to see the pictures on this map. So we can style the points of these pictures with uh, the pictures themselves by changing the simple marker there to a raster image marker. And you can choose a file, but you can also use a data defined override. And since we have the paths to the locations of the pictures in a field, we can choose there the photo field. So it knows where the pictures are and shows the pictures. You can see that already up the map, but very small. And we can also change uh, there the rotation. Um, but if you choose rotation from the attribute table, that's not uh, the variable that you need. So here you'll see uh, the impact of that. Let me make the pictures uh, bigger. It just uh, probably indicates if it's a portrait or a landscape, but not the direction at which uh, the picture has been taken. So that's another field that you need. So the field that you need is the uh, direction field and not the, the rotation field. And now you see that the pictures are rotated in the direction that uh, they were taken and connected to those uh, wedge buffers. You can see that here for this rock that they're taken in different directions. And of course you can play with the scale of the wedge buffer or with uh, the size of the images. So you can play with uh, the size of the pictures and you can also adjust the wedge buffer size just depends on uh, how you're going to use this uh, for your uh, field research, for example. And you see that the buffers are still temporary layers. So if I click on the chip, I can make it uh, permanent by saving the scratch layer. And choose here a shape file. But that will not work because it used a curved uh, polygon uh, geometry, which is not supported by the shape file. So better way of storing this is in a geo package. So I'll call it wedge and the layer name wedges and then I run it and now it's stored. So I hope this uh, video was useful to see how you can uh, get those pictures from Emerging Maps projects uh, on a map and uh, rotate it according to the direction in which they were taken together with the wedge buffers.